All right, today we're going to talk about the bearded Venus and other topics. But first of all, Ms., Mr., or Mix, non-binary teachers embrace gender-neutral honorific. Educators who identify as neither exclusively male nor female have found MX to be a more fitting classroom honorific. Ms., Mr., Mrs., Mix, MX, we got a new thing. Every day there's a new word and a new law and a new tranny. There's more trannies being created in the world right now than there are normal human beings. These students explained why they didn't like the substitute teacher. My student said to me, the substitute was really disrespectful. She wouldn't use your pronouns or your name. Well, I don't believe these stories are read, but it's just propaganda, right? A non-binary ninth grade English teacher. You're an MX. A gender-neutral alternative to the gendered Mr., Ms., Miss, and Mrs. that most of us grew up using for our teachers. MX, generally pronounced as mix, has grown in popularity over the past few years as more people outwardly and openly identify as transgender. Gender non-conforming and non-binary, straight out of the Talmud, has rejected the idea that only two options, male and female, exist. For trans and non-binary educators... This poses challenges, but also opportunities for learning, education, and affirmation. There's Tran. Look at this. Ty Tron. Ty Tran. Ty the Trans. Ty the Tranny. A transgender 7th grade math and science teacher. Mr. Tran. Or is it Miss Trans? Well, it's Mix Tran. Mix Tran, I have a question. Why are you turning children into trannies? Well, because we worship Diana, the goddess of trannies. Don't you understand? The new world is coming. Oh no, here's another one. A non-binary middle school music teacher in Winnipeg, Canada. Venus. Two goddesses were worshipped as Venus, Inanna and Nini Sina. The Semites originally preferred the morning star, which had male characteristics. Under Sumerian influence, they added a female manifestation during the third millennium B.C., Eventually, one deity emerged, which had a split personality, consisting of the female evening star and the male morning star. The Babylonian Istar, or Ishtar, is the prime example. In first millennium documents, the development is clearly expressed. The martial morning star became the well-known bearded Ishtar of Babylon, while the feminine Ishtar was the love goddess of the south. The Aramean Venus goddess, Nanaya, who became a very important deity in the first millennium BC, also had male and female characteristics. And now here's some historical references to this uh, bearded Venus concept. There's a passage in Servius's commentary to Virgil, where in connection with the use of of the masculine deus applied to Venus, Servius refers by way of explanation for the usage to the view held by some that the goddess was double-sexed. There is a bearded statue at Cyprus whose body and garb is that of a woman with scepter and male character, and they believe that she is both masculine and feminine. All right, so it says they believe that she is both masculine and feminine. So the people there believed it, and this is ancient Greece. The people at that time believed Venus to be both male and female. There is an image of a bearded Venus in Cyprus, having the body and garb of a woman with a scepter and male character, who is called Aphrodite, to whom men in female garb, women in male garb sacrifice. You see that? Men in female garb and women in male garb sacrifice to this goddess, okay? Tranny priests, we're talking about. Same thing going on today Right here, yet one more historical reference to the tranny priest. Philochorus, also in his work on Athens, states that she, Venus, is the moon, and that men in female garb, all right, men dress like women, women dress like men, bring sacrifices to her because she is regarded as both male and female. And they got the tranny priests to bring sacrifices to the tranny god, the bearded Venus. Now here's the reference... All right, now this is from the encyclopedia.com. Gender identity. Inanna and Ishtar assumed various gender roles. The proper gender role of Inanna 
is a theme in various Sumerian narratives. In fact, Easter is coming up, right? Easter Ishtar, right? Easter is just another pagan holiday. Ishtar has been considered androgynous because even in her male role, she never becomes fully male, but seems to be a female with male gender characteristics. What do we call that? We call that a tranny. She is nevertheless always referred to as female with feminine grammatical agreement. Oh, yes, a goddess. As articulated in one Sumerian hymn to Inanna, Inanna was entrusted by Enlil and Ninlil with the capacity to gladden the heart of those who revere her, to turn a man into a woman and a woman into a man. Inanna had the power to turn a man into a woman and a woman into a man, to change one into the other, to make young women dress as young men on their right side, to make young men dress as women on their left side, to put spindles into the hands of men, and to give weapons to the women, that women amuse themselves by using children's language, to see that children amuse themselves by using women's language. Ah, it sounds like the public school system. I think Inanna must be the new substitute teacher. Okay, now this is talking about the priests, the tranny priests, and this is, you know, encyclopedia is, is of this world, right? So they're trying to explain away that these people are total sodomite freaks, right? But they're saying, well, maybe these priests were born with physical al- abnormalities, such as hermaphrodites or emasculated into physically castrated persons. Well, yeah, sure, some of them could have been castrated. Sure, definitely, that's part of it, right? But they weren't, uh, they weren't just born hermaphrodites and then, oh, it's a hermaphrodite. Let's just have them be a priest. No, these people became trannies. They became castrated to sacrifice to their tranny gods. All right. Okay, it says, and then it says, uh, or they could have been persons whose mental sexual identity was androgynous, such as transvestites. No, they didn't have gender confusion, all right? They're sacrificing themselves for their god. Just like this guy, Emma Stone, stone free. All right. Let's take a chance and click the play button. You can't hear what he's saying, but I can hear what he's saying. You're better off not hearing. This is NBC Rainbow News. A goddess on a mountaintop Was burning like a silver flame The summit of beauty and love And Venus was her name She's got it Yeah, baby, she's got it Dark now she was Got what no one else had She's got it My baby, she's got it I'm your Venus I'm your fire at your desire I'm your Venus I'm your fire at your 